bit of an experiment we're doing here. We wanted to find out uh, whether or not there might be interest in uh, people having us in the Law of Attraction Change My Life group on the weekend to discuss a variety of topics. And uh, one of the topics that had been proposed to me was the idea of Neville Goddard because uh, the, the Goddard uh, episodes we've been doing, Cindy, have been received very, very well, which is a good thing. And yeah. uh, so we figured, okay, well, you know, I, one of the things that is tricky about Neville is that Neville is a little tricky. He's a little bit tough to get <laughs> used to how to understand, you know, what it is he's saying and what his uh, intentions are, what his meanings are. You have to, you have to have kind of a what we call the decoder ring, and I, I presume you brought your decoder rings, Cindy, because you I always did. have one. I did. I did. Yeah. I, I think I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good. Well, thing. you know, it's kind of like when when you first start learning about conscious creation, there'll be a lot of new language. I mean, mm -hmm. just like anything else that you're learning about, you start learning words that you hadn't heard before, or words or phrases that are used in a way that you hadn't heard them used before. And Neville is not unlike that. <laughs> right, Neville exactly. uses a lot of things that are like, wait, what is he saying there? But after you start understanding it, it starts making a lot more sense. And so I thought it would be fun to uh, talk about Neville. And I've gotten, and you've gotten, messages, emails from people that are saying, you know, tweets we've gotten, enjoying mm -hmm. uh, your discussions about Neville. And so we thought, well, maybe some people would like to join in the discussion and ask some questions or give us some input on their own thoughts about, about Neville. And of course we started, uh, we, we've done how many books? We've done three of the smaller books now. We, we just uh, took on one of his magnum opuses right, um, right. this past Tuesday, <laughs> or this past yeah. Wednesday, I guess it was. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I, I think we've kind of decided, okay, we're, we're engaging in full Neville mode here on LOA today. <laughs> <laughs> I say it was a Neville immersion course, right? Yeah, that's right, like, yes. Just immersing ourselves in it. And I have to say, I mean, there are a couple of things that come to mind for me when I think about Neville always. Of course, the first one is uh, the idea of assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Because mm. so many times, I think, in other uh, law of attraction methods, teachings, there's um, the method starts much sooner than that in the process. In other words, people start imagining or visualizing or writing about how the thing is going to come to pass and Neville just jumps mm -hmm. right to the end and says, don't right. worry about any of that. Let's just, so I kind of, and because Neville does this thing where he talks about, um, he uses the phrase, the pruning shears of revision. Yes. Talks about changing, uh, well, going back and changing the past. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like Neville is a time traveler because he's got us jumping all the way <laughs> to the future where it happens. He's got us going back in time to recreate something. Uh, and I'm a big time travel buff. I love movies and books about time travel. So uh, it's perfect. It's just perfect. <laughs> it, it's kind of funny because when, when Neville was doing his writing and his speaking, he was doing so in a time where the teachings of of um, Albert Einstein and the newly evolving quantum physicists movement was just kind of underway. But Einstein had published his famous treatises just 20 years before. And I mean, it, it barely had even started to penetrate the human consciousness at that point. And it makes me wonder, because he never actually uses any of Einstein's terminologies, but a lot of the things he talks about, I mean, the, you, you're calling it time travel, and that's an accurate way of describing it, but it's also timelessness, right. the understanding that there really is no time, and, and the, or that time right. is an illusion, perhaps is the better way to say it, right? Time is not um, linear, right, right. Time is not well, linear, yeah. You know what else about that, though, is like you just said, Einstein had come out with some of his, his theories, published his things, like 20 years prior to, like, Neville teaching some of this stuff, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, good news travels really fast these days. Right? Yes, I right. mean, we go on, we go online and we look on the internet and we're watching on Twitter, the Twitter feed or wherever we're, or, or reading news or whatever. And there's headlines everywhere. There's new discoveries everywhere. They're just streaming at us as fast as they can. And yet 20, 20 years before or 20 years after um, Einstein's theories, I don't know, I don't know how much time it took for like the average person to know about these things. Were they only published in scientific journals where, you know, unless you were in the scientific community, you wouldn't really know about it. It's not like Neville was on Google. So 
it yeah, makes right. me wonder, right? <laughs> It's like, uh, I don't know if he would have known. But I read something really interesting. It was actually a transcript of, I think, um, a lecture that Neville gave. And he told this story about a woman uh, when he was, I think he said, seven years old, a woman telling him, I've had a vision of you, and I don't know what you're going to do in your life. But, I'm, but I do know that it's going to touch and you know, benefit, I don't know if she said hundreds or thousands or millions, but many, many people. Mm. And she said, a hundred years after you're gone. <laughs> she said something like, there will be a, you know, a revival of the things that you teach in your life and it will like start all over again. And people were, so I thought, oh wow, because that's kind of amazing. I think he was saying that in the 50s or 60s about his own life. So Absolutely. we're sort of seeing yep. that, like, right? There's kind of a interest in Neville right now, so. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Well, and plus, I the reason I mentioned the Einstein and the, the relativity theories and so forth is I'm just impressed because if he didn't know about Einstein's writing, if he wasn't aware of the, the revolution in physics that was going on at that time, then he was getting it in his own way, through his own methods, probably just through his own intuitions. And that makes it even more interesting and more uh, impressive that he was able to, to reach these conclusions without having access to the scientific thinking. That, that's really pretty good. Right, and some of the things that we have read that he said, like he said, look, this is just my experience, but my experience has been so powerful right. that I can't deny it. And so I'm, this is, you know, this might sound super mystical. I mean, he actually referred to himself <laughs> in later years as a mystic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yep. he didn't call himself a minister or a preacher or a teacher. I think it was mostly he always would say uh, mystics understand this, you know, right, right, right. To, <laughs> to describe. So it's kind of uh, interesting that, yeah, I think a lot of it is just with him. Uh, he experienced something so real. You couldn't talk him out of it. He knew it was he knew what was happening. He knew what methods worked. And like when he talked about not not that meditation is a new thing. I mean, there have been experts in meditation for thousands oh, yeah. and thousands of years, right? But his own experience with whatever you want to call it, he would call it, um, oh, now I can't think of the word that he used, but when he talks about like laying down and immobilizing your body and, you know, right, right. relaxing and it's like, okay, it's med it sounds like you're meditating. Um, That's right. You know, he, it was all his own experience. And I think sometimes mm -hmm. he was actually trying to find words to describe it. Because mm -hmm. his language is so different. Absolutely, yeah, very true. Well, I'm, really, and, I'm curious to know what you know. What questions people have? Do we have anybody asking any questions yet? We we have people who are tuning in. Uh, people are saying hello, waving hello, and so forth. No hello, questions hello. have appeared yet in the <laughs> chat, but uh, yeah, this is primarily an opportunity for people who are listening in on the live uh, live streaming on Facebook to you know, if you have any questions that you ever ever wondered about Neville. Uh, and there are, I'm sure there are plenty of them. I've had plenty of them myself, and I've raised them with you during our many podcasts. But uh, yeah, any questions or any any thoughts that you want to share with us? Uh, that this is basically a special session on the Facebook Law of Attraction Changed My Life group, just to do interaction with people on that group. So, you know, guys, I can see you're listening in. I mean, I I, I can see the evidence of it here. <laughs> Number of eyes listening and so forth. You know, so you know. Pick in, tell us what you have in mind, tell us what you're thinking about. And meanwhile, we'll just kind of share some of our own thoughts about Neville. Um, I know that my, for myself, the biggest thing for me about Neville was, I, or is, that I have moved, I have transitioned from a place where I was to a place where I am now. Where I was before was, oh God, he's the guy who puts out all the stuff with the scriptures. I can't bear to read any of it. To now it's like, well, okay, I've gotten past a lot of that stuff because there's some pretty good meat in there. and. Uh, yeah. This is where that Neville decoder ring comes in handy. But when you start really reading it the way you and I have been doing it in the podcast, where we just basically mince meet it, we take one sentence at a time and we ask ourselves, what exactly is he saying there? And, and do some word substitutions based on what he's inferring and so forth and, and draw from, you know, he, look at the sources that he's, that he's taking his quotes from and ask ourselves, how does that integrate? All of a sudden we start getting new meanings that, you know, the, the basic wording that we are used to seeing from, say, a, a religious perspective, it takes on an entirely different meaning. It's an entirely different right. feel. Yeah, and you know what? I think that that might be the, the 
what you just said is sort of a key to really getting as much as you can out of it is that sometimes we read something too fast we don't take the time to really dissect it and make sure that we understand one sentence or one paragraph mm -hmm. before we move on and so we may read a chapter and think i don't understand this like i'm and, and i probably did that with more than one book you know in the past oh, sure. um but i when you were saying you've had questions about neville and you've asked them to me well mm -hmm. but in those same discussions i've had a lot of oh <laughs> uh -huh, yeah, right. about, oh wow. absolutely <laughs> and it's and it's because we've taken the time to yeah really dissect it and and mincemeat as you said really really <laughs> look at it and put it mm -hmm. under the microscope and say what does this mean and how does it apply how does it apply you know to my life um, I love the idea of his pruning shears of revision I, I look I was looking in this book that we both have um, mm -hmm. it's a compendium a treasury of Neville writings and there was there's a chapter in there turn the wheel backwards Mm. And I thought, you know, again, once again, going right. into the past. And I wanted to tell a little story about how I've used that method sure. in the past year um, that was really amazing to me. But I stuck with it. You know, that's the thing. All of these methods, I recognize that there, there's one thing that they require to be effective. And there's there's another part to it. One and two. The first thing. They require focus, intense mm. focus to be effective. Mm -hmm. But the other part is that if you stay with it and just don't give up, you are training your mind to have intense focus. So you're like taking back the control of your own mind and having the ability to have that focus. So in other words, I, I often liken it to meditation. When we're meditating, I've had people say, I can't meditate. I shut my eyes, I start to relax. I try to focus on my breath, and then I'm thinking about my to-do list. And I have to bring my mind back. And then it happens again, and I have to keep bringing my mind back. And I'm like, yes, you're doing it. That's meditation. Keep bringing it back. <laughs> That's how Neville's methods are with me. So I had a conversation that did not go well with someone, uh -oh. someone I really care about. And it just, you know, they said something that I certainly didn't want to hear. I probably said things they didn't want to hear. It just wasn't a very great conversation mm. and afterwards i just it was it was interesting because i can see myself at some point in my life being really hurt being really upset just not being able to stop thinking about this running this conversation over and over in my head but i didn't do that i was like no i'm not going to do that um mm. i'm going to use this neville method i'm going to turn the wheel backwards i'm going to imagine that conversation the way I wish it would have played out and not just the way someone would have spoken to me, but also the way I would have replied. Like, what if this conversation was the sweetest, most wonderful conversation <laughs> I've ever had? What would it sound like? And I sort of rewrote the script, right? And I played it in my mind that way. And every time I was tempted to remember the conversation and to feel, you know, poor me again, that wasn't fun. Yeah, right. I didn't like that. Every time. I would say, no, 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 this is how I remember it. And I would run it through in my head two, three, four times. It was just a short conversation, but I would remember it as if it was, let's rewrite this script to like anybody listening right. would say, ah, the warm and fuzzy <laughs> that conversation was. And that's what I did. And two things happened. One, I, the charge of the original conversation just gone. It just, I didn't have a charge on it anymore when I would remember it. Which is it. huge. Yeah. Right, it's just gone. It did, there was no trigger anymore. And mm -hmm. then about three days later, um, I was speaking to this person and I sort of in a joking way brought up the conversation. Like, you know, just in passing made mention of something that was said and we both started laughing and it was just <laughs> done. <laughs> That's um, great. And I think, you know, I'm sure that Years ago in my past, I've had situations where I would just replay a conversation, you know, a conversation that didn't feel good, an uncomfortable mm -hmm. conversation over and over in my head and right. analyze it to death and try to figure out oh, God, yes. how wrong I was, right? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I just didn't do it. And I'm not saying that 
you know, I will remember this every time. I hope I do because it was very powerful and very effective. Yeah. So just, I just, I'm throwing it out there because it's one technique. I actually have given this homework to a couple clients in the past month or so. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a client that came to me with a, a problem and I, and in the telling of it said, why, well, you know, I, I had this conversation and I was really hurt by what this person said, I said, okay, we're going to, we're going to do some homework and this is what I want you to do. So this is the other part to that. If you want to use this technique mm -hmm. is, and this is what I told her. I said, okay. if I decide today that I'm going to have a piece of cheesecake, cause I love cheesecake. Yum. Um, I'm going to go get it and I'm going to dig into it. And why am I doing it? Because it tastes really good because mm. I'm going to enjoy the daylights out of this. When now I'm eating it now, <laughs> I'm enjoying it now. Now, am I doing it so that a month down the road I can look back and remember? Well, you know, I will be able to do that, but none of my goal is for later. It's not to manifest anything later. My goal is to work the process mm. and to enjoy it now. My goal is to eat this cheesecake and enjoy it right now. I want to taste yep. it. I want to savor it. I'm not going to wolf it down. I'm going to just really enjoy it, right? That's the goal. So that's right. the goal with using this process. I'm going to rewrite this conversation. I'm going to remember it the way I wish it would have happened. And I'm going to enjoy feeling what it would feel like if it would have gone that way. I'm going to enjoy the warm, fuzzy feeling of a happy, sweet conversation mm -hmm. for just for now. That's the, the yeah. process is the goal, right? It's really important to remember that because if we're only working a process so that we can manifest something in the future, we're already attached to an outcome. And we're, already That's true. Creating, we're already creating resistance. That's true. That's a so good point too. It's one, it's one that actually gets overlooked over and over and again in every single law of attraction group on Facebook that I've seen, mm -hmm. because inevitably it's a stream, a series of requests for help. This is, this, and this is going on. How do I manifest X? <laughs> right? and, then they say, and then people will say, but I did that and I did it and I did it and I tried and I tried and it's still not mm -hmm. happening. Right. And it's because we get so attached to mm -hmm. an outcome. Yep. And remember that, when we think of resistance, we often think of it as no, right? Are you resisting something? No, yeah. no, I want it to come to me. I'm not resisting, but there are two types of resistance. Aversion, that's the no, 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 I don't want that. And attachment, that's the yes, 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 this has got to happen, please let this happen. It needs to happen now. <laughs> both of those things are resistance and they're both gonna block you from manifesting it. So it's living in the present moment, enjoying it right now. A very good point because when we're in the present moment where we're enjoying it right now we are we, we can't simultaneously at that same moment in time be worrying about well geez i hope this thing's going to come up in the future because i really want this to show up and I, now I'm, i know i'm in a point of lack because i'm saying that but i really want it to show up <laughs> that's right that's right you can only you focus cannot, on one thing at a time yeah you can't enjoy it as if it has already happened and be worrying about whether it's going to happen at the same time. Those two things are not congruent. So, True. so that's, that's something that I learned from Neville that um, I've used for a long time and I've been using it more and more lately because we've been in our Neville immersion course <laughs> and I'm just watching it unfold in such an amazing way. It's, Mm. I, I really want to hear feedback, you know, from people that have tried it <laughs> or questions. Well, we, got a lot of people, we got a lot of people listening, a lot of people uh, uh, paying close attention to what we're saying. Nobody's volunteering any questions yet. Um, but let me share something with you that I saw earlier. It wasn't actually in this group. It was on another group in Facebook. It was actually an Abraham group. Um, and in this group, this person had come on, this guy had come on, and he posted this post that was basically dissing the whole law of attraction thing. And the basis for his dissing was that, uh, in his view, uh, I'm going to try to remember all the things that he said. Uh, there, there were like three things that he pointed to. One, he says, everything that everybody posts about it is about feeling good. It's, so there's no attention to any of the dark side. And, and yet spirituality has to be about the dark side, he says, that you, you can't really have a true spiritual conversation without it. Second, he says, 
uh, because uh, about 80 to 90 percent of the people he sees um, posting about it are female, then there's this feminine aspect to it. He wasn't really clear what that was exactly, but there was that was the second thing he objected to. And let's see, the third thing, I know there's a third <laughs> one, too. I can't remember what the third one was, but, but the first two were the main ones. Um, and he was basically saying, you know, this this is just sort of a Western thing. Oh, I know what the third one was. The third one was everybody's trying to manifest money. That's what it was. And he was really objecting to that. He thought that was just really absolutely crazy. And, and so I thought I'd bring that up in this context because Neville um, doesn't really talk about trying to manifest particular things very much. He does tell stories where, where that's involved, but it's not like the major thrust of his thing. His major thrust is more along the lines of, here is how to live the kind of life you want to live. Here's how to, to connect spiritually to what you want to connect to. And, and it, I, I don't say that's necessarily the same thing as what this other guy posting was saying, just the similarity caught my attention. Yeah, so interesting that, first of all, you know, to those three points, um, the dark side. Uh, you know, mm. Jung said that if, unless you make the unconscious conscious, that it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of I know there are lots of different viewpoints out there within the law of attraction circle communities. Um, I'm one of those that does a lot of shadow work with clients. I'm okay with the dark side. I know it's there. Um, I think mm -hmm. we have to recognize it. So uh, yeah. it's not all love and light with me. That is for sure. And I, and I think it's because we all have those emotions that we want to call dark. We all have parts of ourselves that we feel shame about. Um, and if we don't bring those things out into the light, then they will affect everything that we're trying to create. So it's the same thing with, you know, you've, you've heard me for a year talk about this all the time. It's like people that don't want to ever mention, you know, they, they think that they are, they judge themselves as wrong if they feel angry about something. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, I mean, it's a human emotion. We're okay. We're okay to have the whole spectrum and to use them all as information. They're always giving us information. The second thing, we just send them to Neville on the, this sounds like feminine energy because um, <laughs> there's a there's a somewhat subversive um, aspect to law of attraction as well as to magic and, and other powers that are often looked to and adopted by a societies that have been oppressed. And so we can see that witches always rise up when there's a great deal of oppression on, on the feminine, right? We can just look at Neville and say, Neville says the subconscious is the feminine aspect of your consciousness. That's and that yeah. that's the womb of creation and that within your subconscious, everything is being created. So I don't know what to say if someone objects to the feminine, um, they need to work that out first. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that was that was my thought. Like, uh, you got a little issue there. Uh, and, you think feminine's a bad bad thing? Like, okay, well, have fun and with that. Then, and then there's the idea of money. Now, this is really interesting because, yes, you're right. If you look through Neville's teachings, you're not going to hear too much about manifesting money. And right. I think this is why. Um, you said that your person there had said that this is all so Western and that everyone in the Western world is just always trying to track money, always trying. Well, that's because for us, money's the how, mm. right? I mean, everything sure. in our society is somehow connected to money. Even mm. when, like, we think about health care, right? It's like if the thing I want to attract is better health, oftentimes people think, well, if I had more money, I could – see a different doctor or get another kind of treatment or treat myself better, eat better food, take better care of myself. And so they connect it to money. We connect a lot of things to money and money is just the how. So that's always the, you know, there's the famous question that a lot of life coaches, want. if you won the Powerball, like, right? In yeah, other right. words, if you didn't have to work again, what would be the thing you'd want to do? And we're always just trying to get to that end thing and to dig down and figure out what's really under that. And people right. that say, I want to make a million dollars. Okay, that's cool. I don't have any problem with you making a million dollars. Why? What would you do with it if you had it? Yep. And sometimes people can't answer that question. But if we think about it, there's an answer there. There's something that we want. And it's not really the money. It's what we think the money is going to bring us. And it might be freedom. 
might be security. It might be actual things. We want a bigger home or we want to travel or whatever. We're all connecting it back to if I only had a little more money. Well, Neville's going to tell you, uh, let's not talk about the money. Let's imagine yourself in Barbados, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Neville was That's not cool. trying to attract enough money where he could buy a ticket to Barbados. That's true. And, he, and yet he says in the story, I had no money. I had nothing. Mm -hmm. I had no money. I had no work. I had, had no connections. I didn't have a way to do this. Uh, and yet he was not trying to manifest a good job so he could make enough money to buy the ticket. He just started imagining himself in Barbados. So he was assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. And what happened? He gets a letter in the mail way back in the 30s or 40s, whenever it was, from his brother with a ticket. We'd like you to come to Barbados. Here's your ticket. So I think the money thing, I think, yes, I think he's right, whoever this was. You're absolutely right. People are always wanting to manifest money. I've done plenty of money manifesting, um, mm -hmm. right? Because I wanted a certain thing. <laughs> and it was like, okay, this is where I need to go. More and more, I'm just jumping to the end with Neville. I'm just time traveling right out to uh, wherever that thing is, not worrying about it too much. The, the only thing I might disagree with him where the money is concerned is I don't think it's limited to the West because as far as I can tell, every culture around the world is mo money driven. So sure. it's, it's pretty yeah, much we're universal. We're a global economy. Yeah. yeah. Agree. Absolutely. We are getting uh, some, we aren't getting questions, but we're getting a lot of good comments. Our friend Jeffrey is back. Jeffrey, of course, was I would uh, like to know crazy the comments. last time. So Jerry, uh, oh, Jeffrey says a few things. He says, first of all, there really is no dark side. Even in the contrast, there is learning and growth and potential. And he says, uh, in regard to shadow work, shadow work, mirror work, root work can all be considered dark work. Even witches and wizards, creators and practitioners were considered dark. Yes. It's all a spectrum. It's just polarity. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right? Absolutely does. Everything um, contains its opposite. More comments from him. It's everywhere in the world. It's everywhere in the world. It is like this. Money is very important. The lack of money is a mindset that's rampant in the world. So a lot of us are working on uh, give back to let others enjoy freedom. Those are like four posts I, that I just read in a row from him. <laughs> Thank you for so, those yes. comments. And Bridget, is, uh, Bridget didn't have a question. She just, she just said that we're on point. So I guess we're touching the right stuff here. Yes, very good. <laughs> Which is good. Um, they always suggest all hellos. Hi, and hello, uh, Nasha and Christy and Hannah. And uh, I think I missed somebody. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is an opportunity, by the way, to uh, share uh, not only any thoughts you have, but if you have any questions for us, uh, Cindy is my Neville Goddard expert. That's why I brought her on for, for this special event here on Sunday. No, so feel free yeah. if you've got any questions about Neville or, or just any questions in general about the law of attraction. Um, she's also a professional life coach. So this is a good opportunity to ask. Uh, and Nasha has a quote, nothing is good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Very true. Agreed. And the number of listeners is increasing. <laughs> so nobody's, nobody's got questions. I guess, I guess they all feel uh, either very, very confident or they're just waiting to see what more we can tell them about <laughs> Neville. I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> it's one or the other. <laughs> one or the other. Well, so I've used the, the Neville process to go back in time and revise a conversation. Yeah, I want to ask you about that actually, I, be, because when you when you talked about that, then you had like four or five other points, and I didn't, didn't want to interrupt you because you were on a roll, but. That's something that I have actually been kind of, you know, running into quite a bit, which is I, I recognize the importance of, 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 of doing the revisioning, and that's always been a little bit of a challenge for me. I'm getting better at it because I just try to think of it in terms of just imagining, and I'll play the imagining out. But the thing that I find is I play it out fairly quickly, and then all of a sudden I'm back to my old thought patterns again. And... Sure. If you understand what I mean, it becomes, right. it, it, it's almost like I'm trying to go in every single time that I have a thought pattern and replace it with a new one. It's like the meditation only I'm doing it in real time during the live world where I'm actually doing stuff. And, and it gets frustrating because it's like, I, I'm running out of material here. I don't know what else to put into my, my little fantasies I'm creating. <laughs> well, I don't think you need to. Um, and actually, I think it's, I think there's a lot of value in keeping those little vignettes short. You know, like the conversation that I was speaking of was a pr it was a fairly long conversation, but mm -hmm. 
there was one part of it that was the part that kept coming back up into my mind because it was the part that sort of was the most charged for me probably. And so one of the things that I did was when we are in a conversation that's an uncomfortable or, you know, difficult conversation that has a charge for us, we can fix some of that with empathy. And that is us having empathy for the other person and recognizing that they're feeling charged too. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. something within them that's going on that's causing them to be defensive as well. And then recognizing or imagining that they're having empathy for us, that they're recognizing, okay, you're not feeling really great about this conversation and we need to change that. We can actually do that in real time, in real conversations, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it works yeah. great. When we don't, when we have a situation we wanna revise, um, it's important to remember that. But the other thing is not to try to make those things too long, too heavy, too winding, Right? We're not writing like a screenplay for a two hour movie. We're just writing a right. skit that's like three sentences long. That mm -hmm. way we can revisit it over and over. And we can tap into the feeling of what we would have felt like hearing that particular thing and saying a particular thing that felt better to say and felt better to hear. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to make it any longer. We can just go back to it and we're remember, keeping in mind that we're doing this uh, for the benefit that we get in the moment of enjoying that conversation, mm, like the right. cheesecake. It's, it's not, you know, and w the, the thing is, is we are going to see results in the future from this process. But when we make it about the results, that's when we start creating attachment. So it's always better to enjoy it for now and really feel it. We, we have a, we finally have our first actual direct question and I think it ties yes. in directly with what we're talking about here. Um, now Bridget was overhearing us talking about how Neville really doesn't talk much about money specifically. For instance, you pointed out the story about the steamship ticket. Um, her, now her question is, um, you said you have manifested money a lot of the time. I don't remember quite saying that, but can you throw more light on this? I'm trying to manifest an amount right now. Well, and that's the light that I want to shine on it is that there's nothing wrong with deciding you want to manifest money. Like I do it all the time. Um, I, but there's usually a reason for it that's specific. And that's why I said, when someone says to me, well, I want to make a million dollars this year. Okay, great. Let's do it. First, let's talk about why and what you're going to do with it, what will having that give you, you know, whether it's a hundred dollars or a million dollars, it doesn't matter. There's probably a specific reason why you want it. And it may be an actual physical reason, like need to pay a bill, want to go on a trip, whatever, like you want to spend it on a specific thing. Mm -hmm. And then oftentimes people want to manifest money because they think they will feel more secure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And Sometimes, yes, but it doesn't always work out that way. Believe me, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I, I've known people that had more money than they could probably spend in this lifetime and were no more secure. They still had, you know, money things going on. Um, so really, when we wanna manifest money, get really clear on why, and if you can, just, jump to the end and start doing the work around that thing that you want because things can come our way, opportunities, people, things through other venues than just us buying them. Not that there's anything wrong with buying them. That's okay too. No, I mean, we can buy things, <laughs> but we can also receive gifts, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, Nasha dropped onto, jumped onto the same topic. She says, yes, I would like to know about money manifestation. And one more thing, I have manifested a lot of things without money, but the things I want the most for some reason, for some odd reason, it doesn't manifest. When someone tells me that the things they want the most are the things that they're having trouble manifesting, um, I think there's, we can get a little complex there, but part, I, I usually say this, and this goes back to that dark side we were talking about. Um, right. that 
whatever you are creating, whatever you are manifesting, which it might be the lack of that thing you think is the most important thing ever, um, there's part of you that's really digging that. <laughs> there's part of you that's really happy uh, to stay right where you are and to not manifest that thing. And uh, oftentimes it's because we have a counter intention or there's some kind of payoff. Um, I heard a story once, and this is very extreme, but it was a story about a woman that was in a wheelchair. And because she was in the wheelchair, um, there were a lot of things that got done for her, right? She couldn't do certain jobs and people took care of her. And there came a time where there actually was a cure for whatever was keeping her in the wheelchair and she really didn't mm. want it. Um, oh, why? Yeah. Well, you know, it's like, because if I get this thing that I think I really want, I'm going to lose whatever I have now. And the thing that you has now probably has some good parts to it. We're always worried about, we often don't manifest because we're worried about losing something. Um, and whatever it is, we think about what we call our, our comfort zone. And it's usually anything but comfortable. It's just familiar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Boy, is that the truth. The comfort zone is anything but comfortable. In fact, it's, it's why about people as uncomfortable stay in, as you can be. It's why people stay in jobs that they hate. It's why people stay in relationships that aren't really working. Um, oh, God, because, yes. because they're familiar with it. And remember, the part of our brain that calls a lot of the shots, um, I always refer to it. Some people call it the reptile brain. I like to call it the squirrel brain. Because <laughs> it's yeah. like... Because it is actually like the size of a walnut, I think. It's not much bigger than a squirrel, an actual squirrel brain, right? And squirrels, all they really care about is keeping themselves safe from the dog that's chasing them, finding a nut to eat, and making some baby squirrels. That's it. They don't think about anything else. Those are the goals in their life, and they don't want change. They don't want anything to keep them unsafe or put them in mm. danger. And our brains are a lot like that. Like, we may be in a terrible job, but we know we survived it yesterday. Mm -hmm. So when we start thinking about branching out and doing something different, part of us says, well, you're okay where you are, let's just stay. That actually is the underlying reason why we don't sometimes manifest something that we really think that we want. Um, every big shift comes after a big letting go. So it's being willing to let go of whatever it is we have now. Bridget said, thank you. And Nasha has a follow-up question. She says, how often should we visualize? Well, my, I visualize every day. And when I, well, you know, I meditate and I often tap into the feeling of the wish fulfilled. I don't often use the word visualize, even though I guess that's what I'm doing, but I like to bring, that always says to me, like sight, like I'm trying to create a picture, which is fine, um, but I like to bring all the senses into my um, work. And so smelling, tasting, feeling, touching, hearing, I like to bring it all in. But as far as how often, at least when you're falling asleep at night, that's according to Neville, since we're talking about Neville and he's my favorite, That that is his number one time. It's not the only time, but he says, this is really important. We've covered some of his thoughts on that in the books that he's written about sleep, because he so he's says entire sleep. Chapters on it. Yeah, sleep is the door to the unconscious yeah. or the subconscious, and he is telling us that our subconscious is what's doing the actual making, and so we want to be sure that when we enter into sleep, as we're falling asleep, so that's one time you want to make sure that you are creating a vision of something that you know, of you having having it already, not finding ways to get it, and right, not not the hows, but the the outcome already there, already with you, assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Um, I, I'm really good at, at trying to go for the hows. I can tell you that it doesn't work. So <laughs> I have a timer on my phone. I have a timer on my phone for three times. It happens about ten in the morning and maybe two in the afternoon and then one in the evening, maybe seven o'clock, I don't even know the times, but it just, it just pops up on my phone, it's in my calendar. It says, assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Yeah, So that's good. So, you know, so if I actually was paying attention every single time, it would be four times a day because those three times and then when I'm falling off to sleep, 
uh, I'm not going to pretend like I always take the the time every time I see that reminder, but pretty often I do um, because I've honed my vignettes down to where they don't take but 60 seconds. So when I see the reminder, I can usually find a minute to close my eyes to imagine, you know, what I what I'm creating. Imagine it as it's already done. And I really like to bring the feelings into it. Um, I had one, I had one vignette where I could feel a wedding ring on my finger and I could feel the stem of a glass and we were toasting. And that was the whole vignette. I just kept imagining that. Um, I could smell the wine. I could feel the glass. I could hear people chattering because in my vignette, we were in a restaurant. I could feel a wedding ring on my finger. I could feel my feet flat on the floor. I could, you know, so I was bringing in all of my senses. And um, I got married. Today's my one week anniversary. So <laughs> I woke up the other morning and I could feel the ring on my finger. And I was like, oh, oh my goodness. That's it. That's just like this. Uh, <laughs> uh, it felt the same. So. It's not just seeing, but it's bringing all of those things in. Nash is very thankful for our messages. Plus, Jeffrey's been uh, um, sending her some texts as well. She has one more thing. She says, one more thing. Is it possible that we lack belief in certain things and that's why they don't manifest? We see it as a dream and not as reality? Ooh, yes. Neville had something to say about that. And this is where Neville gets a little twisty, like, oh, this is, <laughs> it was even, it's a book called, it's a short book of his called Out of This World. But he talks about the greater dimensional space. And using our imagination, he talks about, he calls it the fourth dimension. He talks about a larger dimensional space. And the way I kind of made that make sense to me is, that I'm a small person, so I take up a certain amount of space, not much. And then I'm in my <laughs> office. My office is a certain amount of space. It's a small room. But when I'm in my imagination, I'm not limited to this small body. I'm not limited to this small room. I can be anywhere in my imagination. In my imagination, think about our dreams. We can fly. We can Right. We can we can say I had a dream last night and I was in Europe like, you know, mm -hmm. I was somewhere else. Right. I was outside of my we are bigger than just this body than just this room. So he says in the greater dimensional space that that's where you are creating. That's where your imagination resides. So when you're imagining this thing uh, that you mentioned that you call a fantasy, is it just a fantasy? It's very this is another reason why it's very important that you feel with your body in your imagination. Like, you're, like Neville uses this example. Imagine watching yourself climb a ladder. But then he says, now imagine the ladder's right in front of you and imagine yourself climbing it. You can feel your feet on the rungs. You can feel your hands on the sides. And mm -hmm. so the reason he says it's so important is to sort of like in our imagination, to be in our body, and to do it for the enjoyment of it now is because Neville says time is not linear. And in that greater dimensional space, that larger dimensional space where your imagination is doing this work, it mm. is happening now. It is happening now. That's so right. I always remind, I remind myself of this a lot. Time is not linear. <laughs> time is not <laughs> linear. I'm doing this work. It's like, and that usually gets me really excited. I'm like, it's happening right now. Um, so yeah, I think that, I think you, the answer to your question is yes, we can get in the place. If, if we're in the place where we're going, this is just a fantasy, well, then it's just a fantasy. Um, we want to recognize that everything that's happening is not limited to what we can see with our physical eyes. Yeah, another way to put it is if, if, if we're deciding that it's just a dream, then we basically put a limit on it. We've said, okay, it can never be more than a dream. Yeah. But if we're going to say, oh, this is a dream, which has a completely different feel to it, and this right. is a dream, I, I really want this to come true. Now we've taken the limits off. Now it's like, ooh, yeah, let's live it right, right now. And, this good. and this is true. How mm. do I know? Because I just experienced it. Yes. 
I closed my eyes and I experienced it. And time isn't linear. So it is. It's not that it will be. It's not that I hope it will be. It's that I know it is. By the way, Jeffrey says, congratulations on your wedding. Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> and Nasha says, sorry for my endless questions, but what if you visualize something at night? And as soon as you visualize, you go to sleep. There That's is okay. The secure, there is this secure <laughs> feeling. I'm hoping I'm putting this across correctly. She doesn't really ask the question, but she raises the point. Yeah, and that's exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. Now, I know sometimes I will lay my head on the pillow with the intention that I'm going to run through this little vignette that's all of, you know, 60 seconds, and I don't remember another thing. It's like, okay, I don't know if I did it or not. I was out. I fall asleep <laughs> so fast sometimes. Um, that's okay. I'm, and this is what Neville says is so important. It's important that when we are – he since he says sleep is the gateway into the subconscious – when we enter that door, we want to be the person that has that thing already. We want mm -hmm. the person who's done that thing already. We want to be the best-selling author or the married person or whatever it is that we're imagining. We want to enter through that doorway as that person because yes. every single thing you experience in your life is directly connected to your sense of identity. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about your identity, our I am stories. Um, and so we want to be that. We want to be that person that's experiencing that already as we're falling asleep. So yes, yes, it's okay to fall asleep. <laughs> you know, we, we want to fall asleep. Perfect. <laughs> Nasha had a great follow comment. She says, uh, yes, a perfect example is Prince Harry and Meghan. I thought that was an interesting choice. <laughs> And Jeffrey had, uh, has been sharing a number of different thoughts. He says, uh, fantasies are so much fun, seeing all that is possible. Dreams do come true. Can it happen for you too? He was replying <laughs> to, to Nash, actually, to, to uh, Nasha. But yeah, I mean, that, that really nails it. And I got to yes. send a hello to Janina Roman, who has joined the group. She's one of our, the authors of our, our book. And so, hello, Janina. Yay. Thanks for joining us. Thank you yeah. for coming. Yeah. So I don't see any other uh, questions coming up here. So, uh, but we have a lot of people paying attention to. It. So we, we're getting um, the attention. We, we're, we're getting some involvement, and that's a good thing. Um, that's that is good. No, I love it. I love I love the questions and the comments, and knowing that we're having this conversation together. Um, and that's those are the two pieces that I think are the most important. You know, the one is revision. Now I'll tell you one of the things I learned from Neville, and I cannot say that I can do this really well. Um, for a year or so, I practiced it, and I still do. I just haven't been doing it like I did for that year. But he talks somewhere about as you're falling asleep at night. Well, not as you're falling asleep, but as you go to bed. To remember your day in reverse. So every part of it, moving mm -hmm. backwards. So in other words, I'm in bed, and the last thing I did before I got into bed was I turned the lights off in the other room, and before that I had, you know, put on my pajamas, and right before that I had gotten a drink of water. And he's, like, going detail by detail all the way through the entire day. Now, first of all, I don't know if I've ever made it to the, you know, the beginning of that day in my mind without just falling asleep. Um, but the reason why this is important is because it's another exercise to help us train our mind and get control of our mental direction so that we can laser focus on something. And so he it's talks about, I mean, he it, talks it's about a good, good order. I like doing it in reverse order that I hadn't, I mean, I think we talked about that one time on one of the, one of our podcasts, yeah. but I kind of forgot about it, but it is a good way to do it because if you do it in reverse order, the stuff that's most uh, recent is the one that you remember easiest. Right. And so you're basically walking it backward. And that's good. And that way he, you're not going to skip anything. You're going to do the whole day that way. And then he has you um, revise anything that wasn't how you wanted it to go. Right. Going back so to what we So in the process of remembering the day you are, you know, re doing that, the pruning shears of revision is what he right. says. He says an interesting thing later in his life when he's lecturing. He says, um, we always think of, now here's where he gets a little, you know, starts using Christian scripture. He says, we always Think of the Garden of Eve, Eden and Adam and Eve as being a long time ago, but it's not. It's right now. You're in the Garden right now. <laughs> uh, you're in the Garden of Eden right now, and you've got your pruning shears, and you have to you have to work this every day if you want the Garden to be what you want it to be. So he's talking about the importance of 
these using these pruning shears of revision that he calls them, going back to your day, revising the memories of the things that weren't to your liking. He says to do it every day. He says you can't do it once in a while. Just like if you have a garden, you can't just decide you're going to work in there just one day a year and it's going to look great. No, it's going to get overgrown with all kinds of weeds and things that you don't want. So he is explicitly saying this is an everyday thing. That's the revision. Then there are the ideas of falling asleep, imagining yourself with the outcome that you want. That's been the one that for the last six months I've probably done the most. I've mm -hmm. done this Neville stuff for 15 years, um, but more recently it's been these small vignettes and making them small. One little, like one of the ones I love that he suggests is if you want a, you could really do this for anything. He says a promotion at your job, but think about how many, think about how many things I just got, uh, Jeffrey just congratulated me right now. So, right, right. right. So, so it's like, cause he says, imagine yourself reaching out shaking the hand of your friend and your friend is saying congratulations you know congratulations on your new promotion um i've had we've had lots of people congratulate us over the past week and so really there's lots of things that you want if you if you win if you do win the powerball someone's going to congratulate you right uh, if you tell anyone so <laughs> <laughs> There are some people I think would tell everybody but your point is well taken <laughs> but, but look at people that say you know i uh, I've been trying to heal myself um, of something, and I just came from the doctor and I had a good report. What do we say? Mm. Congratulations. Right? Congratulations. So there's a lot, there's, it's not just a promotion at, at your job. There's lots of things that people may congratulate you for. And what he says is that that's it. It doesn't have to be any longer than that. Imagine your friend congratulating you and imagine you saying thank you. And mm -hmm. he says you may want to take that word that you said, thank you, and use that as your mantra as you're falling asleep and just imagining shaking that hand. So see, he's not devising you to write some 10 paragraph long, you know, screenplay, um, <laughs> just something short. And that I think has been super effective for me uh, in the past six months. Cause I think I used to do it a little differently. And the more I was reading and the more we were dissecting everything, tearing it up, the more I no started way. realizing, you know, it, it needs to be short. Mm -hmm. to where we really and I think I told you this I, I don't know if we were podcasting or if it was off air but I was imagining the the vignette I told you about I was sitting in a restaurant and I kept imagining my feet on the floor right and feeling myself in the chair and my hands on the table and one day when I was imagining it I noticed a, the specific pair of shoes I have on. And like, I didn't create, I didn't, I didn't say, oh, I need to figure out what I'm wearing or anything. I just have to, in my imagination, I glanced down and I had a certain pair of shoes on. I went, oh, that's funny. Like my imagination started adding little details. Which is nice. But it was still yeah. just that same short little vignette. So keep it short and do it over and Na over. Nasha has another follow-up. She says, and is there a time limit for your wish to manifest and how can one be happy when things are going the total opposite way that makes one depressed, down, and angry? And, oh, she also had a second one. Uh, at times, it's so difficult when you have to make some toxic people reverse their actions. Secondly, how do we reverse something which has hurt us during the day? You touched on that earlier, but here's another chance to talk about that. Right. Um, so there's a bunch of things in there. Um, yeah, we, we can't do anything about other people's actions or behaviors. Um, and yet they often change when we start revising our memories of things that have happened. And then the other thing is just a really basic relationship thing it has nothing to do with Neville or with magic or with any kind of mental work, but it's just creating strong boundaries. And you know, the, the simplest boundary is letting someone know what's okay and what's not okay. And we often don't do that because it feels like a difficult conversation. And, you know, my husband says, he always jokes about the words, we need to talk because me being a relationship coach, we talk about communication a lot. And he always jokes, those are the scariest words anyone's ever heard. Right? When <laughs> someone comes up to you and says, we need to talk, it's like, oh. Right, right. Um, 
but just just creating a boundary just being willing to say that it's not okay whatever it is that whatever that toxic behavior you're talking about is because here's the thing when we tolerate when we tolerate things in our life whether it's behavior from someone else or whether it's you know we we all tolerate things sometimes right we tolerate that the I don't know, the light bulb in the porch has been burned out for three months and we don't want to change it. So we just tolerate that there's no light out there. Right, uh, right. As long as we tolerate things, you will not manifest like you want to. I got a few more uh, questions and comments here. One, I'm going to, I'm going to take them out of order because Janina, our friend who helped write our book, wrote, uh, uh, let's see, where is it? Visualizing, hearing, thank you works even better if accompanied by the feeling of appreciation or the feeling you're after. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We want the feelings in there. Yeah, feelings is feelings are the secret, right? <laughs> That's the title of the Neville book. Yeah, feeling is the That's secret. Right. Feeling is the right. secret. That's right. Um, Nasha also offers her con congratulations to you and present Thank best you, wishes Nasha. I appreciate for your future it. with your husband. And Dacia, who's just recently joined us, says, how can I manifest the perfect guy in my life? In fact, any guy, really. <laughs> and I understand <laughs> that feeling, <laughs> too. <laughs> well, I'm going to say something funny right now. We We, we have this idea. Um, with with coaches, I mean, I, a lot of different pro professions, but we call it the doorknob question because people will go to the doctor and they don't ask the doctor that question that they really want to know. Right. And then right as the doctor is going out the door, they go, oh, by the way, I'm wanting to know about this. And I'm laughing because <laughs> I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, we got four minutes and the questions started pouring in. Oh, that's right. We can go questions. over. We're, we're, we're not limited to an hour, so we're okay. Uh, well, well, I am though. I am limited. Well, you are. Oh, well, then, then we do have, have, a have a limit. Okay. But here's what I would say: whether you want to manifest a great guy, and and don't say just any guy. Like, no, let's go for the great guy. Let's go for mm. the perfect match for you. Let's go for. And there are lots of them, by the way. Um, I always, um, you know, I believe that I just married my soulmate, and I also believe that there's not just one person out there for you. <laughs> There's a lot of people on the planet, and there are probably a lot of wonderful people who will be a great match for you. So what I would say is to imagine what it would be like to already have that. I mean, I, that sounds like, but that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about figure out what it is that you would like to feel, how you would like to feel if you already were in that great relationship, and imagine that. Create a short vignette. It doesn't have to be hugely detailed and just imagine it. Imagine it over and over. Um, and then let yourself enjoy what it feels like while you're imagining it. Exactly right, yeah. And don't That's give great. up, keep going. And then the other thing, let everybody know that you're looking for a great guy. Now, Bassie did post one other thing. She says, they're all taken. All the good ones are taken, she says. Well, I've only taken one good one. <laughs> <laughs> you're not greedy huh? <laughs> here's the thing is that that sounds like a limiting belief and that's one i hear a lot all mm. the good ones are taken yeah. um and so so when you catch yourself having that thought um recognize that it's really not true um do you think that there's any other woman on the planet who in the next 30 days is going to find a really great guy and fall in love Mm. It, right? I mean, it would be yeah. ridiculous to say no. To say no, there's not one woman on the entire planet who is going to find a great guy in the next 30 days. Um, why Actually, is it ridiculous? What? It's like saying, that, that, do you think there's the a person? Yeah. That, that's oh, the it would be like saying, do you, think, do you think there's a person <laughs> that won't get a job in the next 30 days? Of course, they'll get, people will get jobs. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. My, my yeah. wife had just the opposite reaction. We were in our 40s when we met. And before we met, she put out the idea that not only were all the good ones not taken, but she was going to ask everyone she knew, do you, who, do you know of any healthy single guys, mentally healthy yes. single guys? Yes. And that's how she found me. Yeah. You know, and you know, she could have that fallen into it because when you're, when you're in your 40s, that's the time to start saying all the good ones are taken. Well, she didn't say that. <laughs> Well, that's the thing that always surprises me is how many times I ask a, a client coming to me because they want to create a relationship. And I say, who knows? Does your family know, your neighbors, people you work with, your circle of friends? Um, do they know that you're looking for a husband? 
Do they mm -hmm. know that you want a partner? And they say, well, I don't know. Or they say, no, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, it's time to, it's time to get busy because that's how we manifest things. We're all connected. And we manifest the things we want in our life often by connection. Either someone gives us information, someone presents us with an opportunity. I mean, that's how we find out about things. So let don't just let the universe know. Let the people that are part of the universe know. Right. <laughs> and and Which is best wishes to you. I if if that's your intention, it will happen. It will. It will. Yeah. Well, we've used up our hour, and I know you have other things you have to go do next. Um, I want to let people know, though, even though we don't have enough time to take more questions today, you and I do uh, podcasts yes. on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, particularly the Wednesday afternoon podcast, which is the same, same time slot as this one. Um, yes. So if we couldn't get to your question today, you know, by all means, join us uh, on the Tuesday and Wednesday podcast. I, I'm posting in the group in the events calendar um, when the various shows are happening, and the ones with, with Cindy are Tuesday, Wednesday morning. East Coast time in the in the U.S. and uh, Wednesday afternoon uh, around the same time that we're doing here on Sunday. Um, we'll also consider perhaps doing another weekend one sometimes to answer some more questions. But we certainly would love to have you join us uh, for our regular podcast, or even send in questions. You can send questions to us by email, or you know, send us messages by by messenger or, or text message or whatever. And we would love to uh, not only take your messages, but we, we've talked about stuff on on the air. I mean, Joel and I, in particular, have talked about um, you know somebody sends in a message via the website or whatever. We spend the entire show talking about it. So yeah, so we absolutely, love we know? love it. We love it. Yeah, keep yeah, those keep those cards and letters coming. That's right. <laughs> well, you haven't heard that phrase in a long time, have you? <laughs> Especially with the internet these days. But no, this is good. So thank you to everybody who uh, came to visit us during our podcast, during our our live stream here in the Law of Attraction Change My Life group. And and Cindy, thank you for taking the time out of your weekend yeah. to share yeah. your insight and your wisdom and and the uh, the wonderful insights of the Neville Dakota Ring. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Let's do it again. Absolutely. And we hope that uh, you'll all join us next time we do all of our podcasts, too. Uh, the, you can find the schedule on the homepage of our website, LOAToday.net. We also invite you to be a subscriber. It's easy to subscribe. The instructions are also there on the homepage. And when you're a subscriber, you get all the podcasts coming directly to your smart device. And meantime, we're going to say best wishes, and we'll see you next time on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone.